Today I'm creating a town for my game. I'm calling it Twilight Town since the name perfectly captures the day and night mechanic woven throughout the game. And it also pays homage to one of my favorite game series of all time, Kingdom Hearts, which also features a city in an endless sunset called Twilight Town. And this is episode four of my devlog about my open world game called Nightstones. Let's roll! Before I get to town building, I want to thank you guys for all the rad feedback you've provided in the previous devlogs of this series. In the last episode, I felt lukewarm about the player look, and so many of you were able to pinpoint issues with his eyes, eyebrows, and mouth. All of you are awesome, but I want to give a special shout out to Stefan, who sent me this series of images showing how I should enhance the character, and a video with proposed improvements to the blink animation. He closed his email letting me know he was no expert, but I don't know, I think this guy's gunning for my job. Wait, I don't even get paid. His changes look so awesome that I considered this expert advice and I did everything he said, except for the specular highlights of the eyes, which I moved to the corners after seeing this cover art for Kirby the Forgotten Land and realized he had the same eyes as the player. Kirby sucks up enemies like my daughter sucks up a glass of water, so why wouldn't I want that energy in my game? And check out how much better this looks. I gave the player a little extra character by adding this board animation if you don't move him for a few seconds, and it really helps make him feel real since he's literally interacting with you. I got this trick from Sonic, who would give you that annoyed look if he was standing still. You guys know I love paying homage to the classics. Speaking of animations, a lot of you made comments about how the player's Tom Cruise run was not really matching the game aesthetic. Ugh, I knew it too. I had tried to find a better running animation for so long, but didn't want to take the time to learn how to animate a run cycle myself. I've only created one humanoid animation before, and it's for a park guest in my mobile game Coaster Builder. And let's just say this animation leaves something to be desired. But solo devs like me have to just figure it out since there's no one else around. So I found this keyframe run cycle image by Preston Blair. He's the guy who animated Mickey Mouse in 1940s Fantasia. And who better to bring some toon style to this game other than Mickey Mouse? Based upon the keyframe drawings, I created this run animation, and I felt it matched the game way better. And since I now learned to animate, I also created a swim animation with the player in more of a horizontal position, which is how people actually swim. The project that took the most time this last month has been getting builds of the game available on Steam for alpha testing. The Windows and Mac versions went pretty smooth, but I really struggled with the Linux build, and I want Linux build available at launch because I want to release the game on the Steam Deck. My favorite system of all time is the Sony PSP, so I have mad love for handheld systems. After days of pulling my hair out, I finally got it working and the game plays great on the Steam Deck. If you've watched previous devlogs, you know I've spent a lot of time making this game run fast and efficient so I could target the handheld market, and it's really paid off. Speaking of Steam, it would really help me out if you could wishlist the game on Steam. There's a link in the description below. It's important because Steam uses wishlists for ranking games in its search algorithm. I appreciate your consideration. I also improved the trails. Again, I made them wider and increased the noise in the edges between it and the grass. I also got a lot of good feedback regarding ways to identify which character is speaking during dialogue. I finally settled on different colored text boxes. It's subtle, but I tried some more dramatic things and I just did not like the aesthetics of it. I also added these signs around the world so the player can easily identify points of interest like this sign in the center of Twilight Town giving you directions to places like the Oracle's Castle or Ciro, the City of Owls. I also added butterfly particles during the day and firefly particles during the night. On a personal note, I wanted to mention that my mom passed away a few years ago and shortly thereafter, me and my brothers all had these strange experiences with butterflies. Like random butterflies would land on our shoulders, fly into our cars, and there was this butterfly that hung out on our picture during the memorial. Like weird stuff like that. I'm not really that guy that looks for signs and things, but I couldn't help smiling when you guys would ask for butterflies in the game. This was one change I was super happy to make since it reminded me of my mom. So thanks for this one. Before entering Twilight Town, I want to give the player a puzzle to solve. This is not a puzzle game per se, but I do want it to have puzzle elements, much like the Legend of Zelda series. I also think puzzles are an amazing way to provide game pacing. That is, providing a versatile gameplay experience so the game doesn't get monotonous. The series that is an amazing example of pacing are the Uncharted games. The gameplay is story, 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 then combat, 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 then climb, 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 and finally a puzzle, and then do it all over again. Mixing up gameplay is a great way to keep the game fun and fresh for players. As a solo developer, I don't have the bandwidth to support a lot of elements, but my plan is to use exploration, story, and puzzles as the pacing elements. So there's a fair amount of story and exploration on your way to Twilight Town, so now it's time for a puzzle. 
And those of you who have played my games in the past know that I love designing puzzles with a lot of tension in them. Like where you need one puzzle piece to be there and also not be there at the same time. And this puzzle is no different. If it's night, then there's this bridge leading you into town. But there's also this gate that comes up stopping you from getting off the bridge. So this puzzle is actually pretty simple. Obviously you need to be night to cross the bridge. Oh wait, but then there's this gate blocking you. So obviously you need to be day. Yeah, you definitely need to be day. Oh uh, wait, but then there's no bridge. If I had the glider, I could just fly across, but I don't have the glider yet. There are these strange stones with symbols on them under the bridge, but I'm sure they're only there for decoration. So how do I solve this puzzle? Well, how should I know? I'm just the dumb game developer. You're the player. Go figure it out. There'll be no spoilers here. After solving the puzzle, you can enter town, which I now need to build. Up next is town building, and I really think you guys will like what I created. Hopefully you're enjoying this video enough to give me a like and a subscribe. It really helps. Thank you so much. So now I can concentrate on building Twilight Town. I decided to make the town two main levels so I could get some rivers and waterfalls in there. I started with the lower level, which I imagine to be like a courtyard entry. There wasn't enough water, so I made this fountain, complete with particle effects to add a sense of movement to the area. For the upper section, I carved in a river and laid down some houses in nature in a way that surrounds the lower level. And I'm super happy with the way this looks. But the town is definitely missing some inhabitants, so let's add some NPCs to interact with. I created a new shader for the characters so I could change their colors easily. I don't want you to think that this mouse and this mouse are the same character because they are not. Modifying the character's colors is a great way to add some variety to the world. Now I'll place some characters around to interact with. And this is starting to look like a real town, complete with shopkeepers, side quests, and helpful hints. I really like this. Now wouldn't it be cool if all these lamps I put on the ground would light up at nighttime? Well, I can't actually use lights because lighting is a really expensive computation, and you've learned by now I'll always find a better way. And that better way is a post-processing technique called Bloom. And I'd like to take a minute to explain how it works. Bloom takes advantage of a color property called High Dynamic Range, or HDR for short. Before HDR, digital color was kept as 256 shades of red, 256 shades of green, and 256 shades of blue. With those variations, you could display about 16.8 million different colors. Plenty, right? No, it's not. Especially for images that are very dark or very bright. There's just not enough colors to differentiate shades of black and white. HDR was created to resolve this issue, as HDR allows for more color shades. In my game, I make use of the expanded HDR range for Bloom, and Bloom is a fancy word for blur. Any color that exceeds the Bloom threshold is blurred by the Bloom intensity. So how does this relate to light? Well, your brain is conditioned to perceive bright, blurry objects as light. Look at the moon and notice the blurry halo around it. Look at a neon sign and note it also has a blur in the same color as the light. So if I blur these windows and these lamps, you perceive it as an expensive lighting effect, but it's actually a much cheaper blur effect. Isn't that awesome? There are a few negatives with this approach. The light doesn't illuminate other objects, nor does it cast any shadows. And that's because it's not actually light, it's a blur. You can see here when I put an actual light into this lantern, it illuminates the ground and casts shadows. So Bloom isn't a perfect system, but it's close enough to trick your brain into perceiving it as light. And bam! Twilight Town at night looks amazing. I showed it to my son and he was all over it, so I knew I did a good job with this. But then he found it even funnier if I just jumped into the water from this island. Okay, ready? Hi. Jump guy! <laughs> <laughs> so I don't know how good a judge he is, but I hope you guys like it. And I hope you've enjoyed this episode. Please click this video to watch more Nightstones devlogs, or click here for a recommended video. I appreciate you watching and I really appreciate your support. I'll see you in the next step vlog.